happy Saturday, everybody, and you're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and we are here at the Melvin Pick Ambassador Hotel in the heart of Accra. Today is going to be excitingly creative. You'll find out why. We'll be right back. For the monologue, this is when we hit the streets of Accra and we ask different women their opinions on various topics. Let's hear what it is today. My level, love. my level, love. my level of education will. Um, will help me determine the husband I want because um, I know my visions, I know what I want and then if I'm able to get a man who is up to my standard or above my standard, I think it is going to help my family and then my children as well. So I would consider that. I would say yes, the level of education will determine the husband I choose because if I'm a degree holder, I would like someone who has upgraded above me so that he can motivate me or help me go up. But if I take somebody who is like lower than mine, he will then sometimes, your visions and aims will be limited, yes. Sometimes some people find themselves in marriages with husbands whom they've not been into a higher level. But you see, um, you see, I believe that we all have our purposes. Maybe somebody's purpose is not to reach that level, but the person will be able to do something better that will make the person survive. So it is not a matter of being higher. So I think my level of education will really determine the man I'll marry because probably maybe when we are taking a decision, he might not understand me because of my level of education. So in case he's even an SHS leaver, I'll try to pull him along by advising him to go the next step so that we all be at par. So that in case we are discussing something, we'll be able to talk academically, like we'll have that thing, yeah. Except that because in this level or in this modern Ghana, we move with class. So with my class, I think I'll take someone with the same level. So at least it wouldn't be like me infringing because when I'm more educated than him, I think I would use my education level to be as a blockade to our marriage. So I think I'll marry someone with the same level. I don't think my education will help me choose that person. and. And because like I love the person, no matter who the person is, and I don't care about my education background, whether I'm in a higher position or lower position, love is love. Even if my husband is lower than me, I still love him, so I'll still marry him. It doesn't matter about my education background. The woman on the move is a female entrepreneur out there. She's extremely hardworking, very driven. Let's see who she is. Data from the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research is a indicates it may take up to 10 years for a large number of graduates to secure employment. 25-year-old Jennifer and 26-year-old Barbara are not new to the challenges. The two who have been struggling to get a white-collar job upon completion of their diploma in travel and tourism have now created an income source for themselves. They are into the selling and delivery of jollof rice and wachi, a dish of cooked rice and beans. Growing up, I always wanted to be um, a passenger handler. I had this passion for seeing planes and seeing those hostesses and all that. But um, I realized you didn't get it how you always wanted to be. 
Um, so sometimes you'd have to cope with the government and fit in where necessary. So I just decided to grab this opportunity. Barbara Kisiwa holds a diploma in travel and tourism and has been running the business for close to a year at Kwabinya in Accra. To further increase her chances of securing a job, Jennifer pursued a higher national diploma at the Accra Polytechnic. And for her, business has been quite good so far. Everybody just likes what he or she does. So I'm just happy with what I do. By 7, we bring everything down. So let's say by 7.38, we start selling. And it depends on the market. When the market is good, by 10, 9.30, everything gets finished. So we have to pack and go up. So Barbara tells me there has not been any regrets of serving their numerous customers each day. We are able to deliver, let's say, 30 to 50 packs a day, averagely. Um, selling, let's say, we are able to sell 500, 600 cities a day. Currently, their friend, who is also an unemployed nurse, and their auntie have been assisting them to run the Wachi business. Their auntie encouraged parents and guardians of unemployed graduates to support their entrepreneurial drive. Uh, so I'm a support woman. Now I'm also a support woman. Unemployed graduates should be encouraged to start a business. Their income could even be more than those engaged in white collar jobs. It is clear while government is seeking solutions to reduce graduate unemployment, it appears more graduates are now setting up their own businesses after leaving school. Our winning woman for today is Mrs. Teresa Ayawade. She's the executive director of Multiple Concepts and also the co-founder and CEO of Charterhouse Productions. Now that's Ghana's number one event company. I'm so proud to have you on here today. Thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Renee. And congratulations. I'll tell them why Thank very you. soon. So you're very, Thank very you. welcome. So tell us a bit about how you started. Charterhouse. I mean, that's a mega production company. How did you start it? What's the inspiration? Well, there is uh, our inspiration for starting Charterhouse was basically um, built on the um, the growing musical industry that was um, that was happening that was booming around the year two thousand. Because you're going to be 20 years yes, soon. The 20 Ghana years, Music Ghana Award. Award is 20 years wow, this year. Wow. And Turner House as a company will be 20 years next year. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So we basically um, realized that the music industry was booming. This was when there had been a lull in the industry between the um, high life, Boga mm -hmm. high life period. Mm -hmm. There was a big lull in the industry. And then all of a sudden, um, Reggie Box Stone came onto the market with the hip life music. Mm -hmm. And then all the young boys jumped onto the bandwagon. And so we had so many hip life groups coming up. Mm -hmm. And then the music began to evolve. Right. So we realized that there was a big boom in the industry. And it was a very competitive, it had become very competitive mm -hmm. amongst the youth. It was employing a lot of youth. And there was just so much happening. Mm -hmm. Production houses were, were opening, there were um, video production houses, music videos became a big thing, and basically a huge ecosystem was being built around right, the industry. Right. So we, we observed and we thought, um, I think it's about time to create something that would um, mirror the Grammys mm -hmm. in, in Ghana. Right. So that was our aim, to be able to create a huge event as big as the Grammys that would celebrate and recognize are hard working musicians. In so it was mainly for year. musicians. The Ghana Music Awards was, was okay. for musicians. And okay. that's how the company started. The Ghana oh, with Music the Ghana Awards Music Awards. was our first event. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And what were you doing before this? Before then, I was working at Joy FM okay. as um, a promotions manager. Okay. I had been working there for about, uh, I think, four years. Okay. And um, I had been posted to. I joined Joy FM as a sales executive, mm -hmm. and I was posted to Kumasi to join the team that, that, that set up Love FM. So I became the sales manager at Love FM. Okay. I worked there for about two years, and then I was posted back to Accra 
as the promotions manager. Oh, so wow. at Joy FM, I was working on promotions, you know, things, organizing promotions for radio. Right. So was, I was already in that space. But growing yeah. up, were you always like creative? Like, did you, did you always enjoy, you know, the love of music and television and entertainment and, and all of that? Um, I've always been like, a, I've always been a fun loving person. I love entertainment. I love having fun. I, love I actually, partying. you know, before mm -hmm. I actually met you, I actually mm -hmm. thought you were very quiet. I'm I actually... always saw you as a very quiet person. <laughs> so the first time I met you as the CEO of Chatterhouse, uh -huh. I was quite surprised because I was expecting a go, 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 go. <laughs> you know? But uh -huh. then I just thought very, very laid back, which is simple mm -hmm. elegance, which yes. I really like. Okay. But I just thought that, wow. <laughs> well, I'm actually, um, I do let my head down. <laughs> when I, I party hard. Oh, we've had it together before, so I, I, I know that. I'm not telling them yet. <laughs> I, I work hard and I play hard, so maybe when you see me, I'm in work mode, you know? Mm. No, the, the yeah. first time, yeah. the, the very first there's time I saw you. There's work mode and there's play mode. Right. So I'm very serious when it's about work and all right. of that, and I when it's time to clear my head down, I let it down. But I love fun. I mean, I'm, I'm a very light-hearted, very easygoing person, so I love entertainment. But that was definitely not... I mean, I didn't even know this industry existed when mm. growing up. You know, my father wait, was a wait, banker. You, how did you write? How my did you grow? My father was a banker, and I went to Achmata School. I studied okay. um, economics, and, and I loved economics. So I was like, I want to be an economist working with the World Bank. Oh, my goodness. That was and my that dream. That was my <laughs> aspiration. So for me, that was it. So I actually enrolled even um, at University College London to study economics. Oh, wow. So that was my path. Wow. You know, I was going right. there. Unfortunately, you know, in life, things didn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. My father got caught up in um, the cool situation mm. in those days where mm. he lost his job, his assets were frozen mm. and things like that. So everything in the family changed upside right. down. And I was stuck in the UK hang, halfway through my, my schooling. Oh, wow. And fees weren't getting paid and things like that. So... Um, I, I spent about two years hanging around the system for a while, mm -hmm, and then I mm -hmm. decided that, you know what, let me just it's go back to Ghana. You, right. Let me just go back to Ghana and reorganize myself, mm. take a deep breath, and start afresh. So that's wow. basically, I Thank just packed. God you didn't give you up. Know, I didn't give up. Yeah. I just packed my bags, and I came back. I said to myself, Ghana is my country. I mean, God knows why he placed me there as a Ghanaian, you know. So if I have to thrive and post, but then, I mean, it has to be so in that's Ghana. A, that was a positive mindset. Yeah, so I just packed my bags, I said bye-bye to everybody, and I just moved back to Ghana. Just like that. And How old were, were you? Good. I was 21. Okay. Yeah, because I'd been there, as I, as I said, from, mm -hmm. from about 18, 19. Yeah, so I'd been there for about, as I said, from, so I was in the UK for about three three to four years. Oh, wow. I just packed my bags and came back and I said, you know what? And did you yeah. know what you were coming here to no. do? No, oh, that's a step of faith. I just, wow. I just, I just packed and came back and I was like, like Lady, came, did you hear that? <laughs> a step of, yeah. I call, I'll call it a leap well, I said a leap, of, not a, a step. leap of faith. a huge leap of wow. faith because there's a lot of uncertainty at home. Like I said, my father had lost his job and things had so just gone. So do you have gone. siblings? Yes, and I have were siblings. They, you know, okay. And, and so I was with some of them in the UK. Okay. So at that point, my parents felt relieved that at least if things are not too good here, some of them are abroad yeah. and, and they so can sort the themselves family, out yeah. and then leave the younger ones here. Mm. And yeah, it's me. I call and phone. I'm like, hello, I'm coming back home. <laughs> my mom was like, are you sure? <laughs> coming to do what? To do what? <laughs> you know? I was like, no, I'm coming back home. Ghana is my country. If I can make it, I mean, if I can make it in the UK, I can make it in Ghana. Right. Why, why? I and love that. So I just packed my bags and I just came. And I had a lot of faith in God. I believed mm. that he had a plan for my life and wherever I was going to be in, in the world, he you would make, make it come it to pass. Yeah. So I wasn't afraid. Ghana is wow. my country. How can I be afraid of coming back? Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, really I just like came that. back and then I, I just looked around and I said, okay, what can I do? What can I do? I don't want to, you know, sit at home doing nothing because I was used to, you know, working mm. and, you know, the go-go. When I was in the UK, I was working in retail, mm -hmm. you know, so let me find something to do. I called up a friend who had a store in Adabaka. Mm -hmm. She said, if you don't mind, you can come and sit in my store. I said, no problem, I'll be a store girl. Wow, wow, humble <laughs> so, beginning. <you> know, <laughs> so my friends were in university, you know, in year one, year two, you know, first year, second year. How did it make you feel when you saw them? If you met any of your friends, any of your mates, did yeah, it make you, yeah. you know? I mean, it was a very, it was a kind of situation that could make you really depressed and disappointed mm. because obviously here was I going abroad to study and all of a sudden I'm there and the study wasn't happening and was truncated and I'm hanging in the room and my and friends it wasn't were planned, school, totally unplanned and all of that. But I decided when I came out, I was happy, I used to hang out with them. But the thing in my mind was that I always knew that this was not my end. 
there was this, this, this faith I had in myself that this is not my end. This is just the beginning of something great, something new. Do you think, I mean, looking back now, mm -hmm. Chatterhouse next year will be 20 mm -hmm. years. Looking back now, do you think what you went through has made you a part of who you are today? Yes, Are definitely. there any lessons learned from there? Yeah, lessons learned in the fact that um, I took my destiny into my own hands. Mm. You know, when, um, you know, when you come from a certain background and you are, your parents provide everything for you. Mm -hmm. You get used to every, them mm -hmm. doing everything. Mm -hmm. But when the rug got pulled from under my feet, mm -hmm. I realized that, wow, I had to Step stand up. on my own. Yeah. And unfortunately, our family, we are very um, nuclear. Mm -hmm. There's no um, f family, uh, friends, and uncles to go to for any help. So I was like, I'm wow. going to make it or sink. Yeah. So I had to just decide that, okay, I'm going to make it. And I think it was... In my mind, it was my mindset. So it was a determination. It was my mindset that I can succeed, I can make it, I just need to work at it. That was it. So that was my attitude. So whenever I went to work, I was focused. I was, I mean, I'll play around and, you know, my work was work and play was play. People didn't need to get me. They thought I was too serious. They thought I was too this, I was too that. But I was just, I, I was just focused, you know. And I knew, I said to myself, by the time I'm 30, I want to be self-employed. I want to have my own business by the time I'm 30. That's because I, I felt I had so much will and I needed to be able to express it. Right. And I felt I could do it best when I was self employed. Yeah. yeah. So, way back at my, in my early 20s, I said to myself, by the time I'm 30, I want to be self employed. Wow, ladies, I hope you I mean, I'm so <laughs> inspired. I hope you are listening out there to the young ladies out there. You could actually set your, you know, goals for yourself. You could tell yourself, yeah. give yourself some time and say, I will make it. Yes. Because life can sometimes throw things at yes. you that is so unexpected yeah. and planned. But then you are not, I like what you said, that you didn't allow it to sink you. Yeah, because I thought that, that was just the beginning. For me, I, I, always, I mean, now in my life, I feel that there's still a lot to do. So, so I mean, the challenges, they, they, they were coming at me like this. I mean, you don't know half of it, you know. They were coming at me like this, but I'm like, you know, um, this is so what I am. going back to the store in Adabraka, yeah. so then what happened? So then you worked there for a while, and then how did you get out of it? So I worked there for a while, because I felt I'd been away from, from, from Ghana for about four years. I didn't know people. I had, like, no, all the, the only people I knew were my, my mates in university. Mm -hmm. you know, so I needed to make uh, connections yeah. and get to know people. So I was happy to sit in the shop, meet people, chat up, you know, just get to know what's new in Ghana, what's happening, and then try to bring my little retail experience into the right. shop to see how I could help mm. them get better mm -hmm. with what they were doing, you know. So for me, I saw it as a job. I'm here yep. to bring my retail skills to help in this store in Adabaka. Yeah, you know? yeah, to actually help so them To help them it, right. there. So I really, you know, jumped into it, and I met a lot of people there. But while I was there, I heard on radio that um, a new station had opened called Joy FM. And that was the, days, the time when the you know, private broadcasts and had started. Just started. So I listened to Joy FM and I was like, okay, I like chatting, I like chatting, I like talking to people, I get to know people. So why don't I go to Joy FM and ask for a job to be um, an interviewer? I wanted to actually do like what you're doing, a talk show, okay. talk to people, okay. chat to people. But I know for the early days of radio, they didn't understand. Mm. We're not doing that at that time. At that time, it was all about playing music. And, and the news. And the news, <laughs> yeah. So when I went there, someone asked me to look for Chris Chum, so I went to look for him, and I told him what I wanted to do. I told him my story. I gave him my CV, and he saw that I was quite good academically. I mean, I, was, I had a very good record academically, and he saw my educational background and my everything. He said, okay, why don't you um, go let them, you know, go read the news or something, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was taking by to me and I'm forcing to, okay. to, to go read the news. And I came back and said, nah, I don't think she's a good news reader. Why? I don't know why. I thought I was very eloquent, you know? Wow, that's <laughs> what, you know and I think you, you speak quite very clearly you know? and everything. So I said to them that... Did they give you any reason why? Did you ask why? No, I just said... Um, and that, I'm only asking this because sometimes when we are rejected in quotes, mm -hmm. it's good to know, know why. why. So if we have to improve upon ourselves, I, I, I was there was just no told reason. That okay. I was a good news. I don't know whether it was my voice or whatever, okay. but I was just told that. I didn't, it didn't really bother me because I really didn't want to read the news. And okay. so I kept asking them, Isn't, can't I do interviews? Can't I present? And they said, no, you have to be a, either you're a DJ or you're reading the news so you can play music. I said, can you play music? I said, no. The only music <laughs> I like to play is gospel music, you know, <laughs> or jazz or soul. But I did, I did, they didn't get me. 
But now they're doing a lot more kind of talk programs. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. That's what I was looking for. Yes. But so I said, well, um, so Kwesi Chum said, no, but that's not the end. You don't, I mean, that's not the end. Of, that's not all you can do mm -hmm. in radio. So many other things you can so do. So why don't you try your hands at sales? Because I've seen you did some retail, I mean, sales when you were in the UK. I said, okay, why not? So he just gave me this full pile of books. Go and read these books and come back and let me know if you want to do it. <laughs> So I went home and I devoured the books and I was like, okay, sounds interesting. This was like the early days of radio. Nothing much was happening on the scene. So it was... Um, and Joy FM was one of the first. One of the first. Yeah, private, the first, yeah. Right. So, so I was part of the first batch of oh, um, wow. sales executives that were employed. So employed and you know, those days will give you like three cities for the week. Oh my goodness. For transportation. Oh my goodness. And you have to take taxis all around to go prospecting and all so of that. So was it trying to get sponsors? Get, get, get clients to companies to advertise on Joy Okay, FM. okay. It was very tough because okay, you had to wow. introduce to them the concept of radio, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, advertising it wasn't popular at, the time. At, all, at a time. So we had to really break, you know, break ground for the for that to happen you know but but it was good we had to um we were able to bring in the sales and all so of that. i see here that you actually went to kumasi to set yes. up love fm yes yeah, so so when there was time for um love fm to open up um obviously chrissy had worked with me for a while and he and to knew my work ethic so i was the one who was selected amongst the team i was only girl you know in the sales oh, team you're kidding me <laughs> I, was only, I was only girl in the sales team it was all full of boys you know <laughs> So I was really holding my own, you know, mm. with them. I was bringing in the deals, mm. you know. <laughs> you were not messed around. I was, no, 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 no. Okay, so when I was trying to open Kumasi, he said that I think Teresa would be the best person to go. Mm. So he approached me when I would want to go. And then my parents were like, you're going to Kumasi. Had you been there before? I hadn't been there before, you know. Oh, wow. I hadn't really been to Kumasi before. So you're going to Kumasi? I said, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I'm, so are you I'm, one that embraces challenges? I'm very adventurous. Mm. I'm very adventurous, yeah. you know. So he said, go to Kumasi. I said, why not, you know? So I packed my bags and then I went to Kumasi. I was like, okay, Kumasi. So I go, here I am. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, went to, I lived in Kumasi for two years. We recruited um, the So at the, the time you weren't two. married or anything? I wasn't married. You didn't then. have a family? No, like I, was, I, was, I was dating, but I wasn't married. Okay, yeah. okay. So I went to Kumasi. I, I worked with them, a team in Kumasi to hired a the sales team and then we worked. Um, we, we basically did a whole lot of like different things in Kumasi. We because we there were private stations in Kumasi but Door FM style of broadcasting right. was quite right. new there. Mm -hmm. So we kind of broke a lot of um, barriers and mm. you know we just got got things. And you sort going. of like set a benchmark. Set a benchmark then, in Kumasi. Right. And um, I basically delivered what I had, had been sent there to do. I recruited wow. the sales team, I established the marketing department, I put in place all the operations. So you were there for two years. I was there for two years. Wow. And then I it was time for me to get married. So I went to Casey <laughs> Chuma. I said, Casey please um, I think I've done my bit in Kumasi. So you're married, you're married in Nigeria. You met in Ghana. I met in Ghana. Okay, yes. okay. I met him when I was working at Joy FM. Oh, that's nice. He was actually a client. Oh, well, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so. Okay. No, I'm not going to say what I'll do. I'll tell you later. No, no. Let's toast to this. Okay. <laughs> let's toast to love. Okay. <laughs> And wishing all the ladies <laughs> out there love in different ways. Different ways. <laughs> different places. May you stumble upon it. May you wherever. stumble upon it. Very soon. All the best. <laughs> mm. Mm, this is this banana mm. in here. This is a smoothie from yummy, the yummy, yummy. one to one bar here at the Move and mm. Pick Ambassador Hotel. Thank you so much. You're very, very good. The mixologist is really, mm. really good. Really good, yeah. Thank you very much. So we're talking about love. Hmm. Yes, L O V E. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you met him and then you went to Kumasi and then you had to come back to Accra. Yes, yes. And how I met him was interesting. Um, a colleague of mine at work said, Oh, there's this new company doing an auto show and um, I, I wanted to help me to do my proposal because I was very good with proposal writing. Mm. Helping to do my proposal. I said, Okay, what's the deal? What's, what, he said, Oh, I'll give you commission when we close the deal. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a proposal for him and he said, oh, come along with me, let's go and do the presentation. So I went with him to do the presentation and we won, we won, the, we won, the, business, we won the business 
And I guess that was a, he was you a cherry the on top of. You, you, exactly. <laughs> you won cherry. the business and even. And the cherry on top oh, of the that's cake. that's so sweet though. He <laughs> saw you and I'm sure he, he was mesmerized. I'm sure he was. Oh, my I'm goodness. sure he was. Because listen, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You won an award. The, one of, you. you were one of the women that was honored at the mm -hmm. Glitz Award. And I came, I, you know, Thank I was you. so proud of you that, that evening. Watching you. you go up there, and your husband stood beside you. You should have seen the pride ah. on his face. It was so beautiful. I mean, wow. a lot of the women had their husbands come yeah. with them, yeah. and he was holding your citation beside you. But he was almost like swelling oh. in pride, and it's just oh. so beautiful to see the two of you because you've been Thank together you. for it should be over this, twenty this years. Yes, our twentieth anniversary as well. So, what's the secret ah. to keeping the love fresh <laughs> and exciting? Tell the ladies out there we're, we're learning. <laughs> We are learning so many different ways. I What's think everybody secret? handles their their relationships and their lives in different ways. I mean, my my way is just to be myself and not to be not to take myself too seriously and to hold on to too rigidly to things. Mm. I think for me, because you both you work together we work as well. Together. And what is that like? Yeah. I was going to ask you, <laughs> what is it like? Because you know, a lot of the ladies I interview, I always ask how you're able to balance your career. You know, with work, you, you, with, with, work with, with home, with, with home your, yeah. your family, yeah. you know, and all of that. Now, that's when you're, 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 you're working somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, now you're working together. Yeah. So then how are you able to, because whatever happens at work, together comes home. <laughs> so then how are you able to separate <laughs> it and, and balance it and, uh, <laughs> and still look it's, at each other with such excitement yeah. and love? It's, um, it's quite tough. It's quite tough. But I think what helps is that he understands my schedule. Mm. That's a big, big help because mm -hmm. can you imagine if he was like working in a bank or something and I was doing this, um, working on e events. Events yeah. are crazy yeah, so because what night. happens is that you spend the whole week planning and working, coming home late and then you spend the weekend executing mm. because most events happen on the weekend. Right. So you work the whole week, come home late, come home late and then on Saturday yeah, you I'll work the whole day and mm. then you come home so tired and Sunday you're so tired you can't even go to church. Wow. So can you imagine if he didn't, if he wasn't in that space with me, he would not understand and there'll be a lot of pressure mm. on me, you know, and that would right. not have made me blossom and, you know. So whose idea was it to start the company, to set the company up? Um, it was actually his idea. Okay. Because um, he, um, he, he is actually from a finance background. Okay. He had come to Ghana um, to work in the finance industry. Okay. And then by in associating with me and what I did in radio, he got um, interested in okay. what we were doing. Okay. And he set up. So, so you he know what I mean yeah. when I said mesmerized? You know, like you melted him you totally. Know, you, know. you know, in every way. So he, so he formed an, advertise, an advertising company called right. Multiple Concepts okay. Advertising. Okay. But I was still working at Joy FM, Okay. you know. And so, um, and then he created a program called Agro. Mm -hmm. You know, there was this TV um, local language game show called Agro. Okay. So he, he actually created that. Okay. And they were going all around the country with Western Union and all of that. And... Um, I think um, one, and they used to have artists as part, artists performing as part of the, mm -hmm. the, the production. And I think one day backstage, he saw um, Lord Kenya and Achiame. Okay. They were arguing among themselves who was who would get the most fans when they go out <laughs> into the audience. You know, a playful argument. Yeah, a playful argument. You know, just watch when I go. I have more fans than you. Kind of. So he just kind of watched them. And when he came home, he said, "You know what? The way I mean, I love how your Ghana music scene is booming." And there was this argument that was going on backstage. And I said, I think, uh, this, why don't we organize an event called the Ghana Music Awards? Really? So just it was like actually that. his suggestion. So I was working at Joy FM. I was like, wow, that's a good idea. Because I was already in the media space and I understood what these things were. So I was like, And at Fantastic. the time, were the Ghanaian uh, musicians like honored or awarded in any way? There were lots of other schemes that were um, taking place. Okay. It was Accra, Gay Crag, um, okay, Sunshine right, Awards. Right, right, a number right. of awards okay, were going okay. and taking place. Okay. But um, we came at it from with the marketing mm. perspective, right. because we worked in marketing and advertising, mm -hmm. so we knew how to create a hype and how to package and how to really, you know, get the corporates interested right. and right. show them value mm -hmm. from being part of that kind of platform, mm -hmm. from what I was doing at Joy FM as well. Right. So, um, so we came to, we decided that I should pull out. At that time also, you know, my, my education had gotten truncated when I was in the UK. Right, so I had come back to Ghana and I was just working, working, working. Mm. But at some point I decided to go back to school. Right. So 
um, I went to enroll at Legon and I was given, you know, those that they give you courses. Yes. <laughs> I was given. You don't get I, to choose. I applied them. for my economics again, and this time around they gave me psychology. Mm. So I decided to do it. Right. Anyway, so I did the psychology course. So has it helped? It has helped. It because, has? Because, yeah. Because it's about understanding, um, um, basically, it's a study of human behavior. Yes, so and with me, managing yeah, all this talent, all this talent creativity, and, yeah, and all of that, that it, has helped, it has helped right. greatly, greatly, greatly. So everything happens for a reason. Every, everything happens for a reason. So after I went to study psychology, I was actually happy. I was like, oh, I really thank God I did this course because right. I've, I've never known the course like that is the study. Mm. Never. But it was great. It was great doing my job. So I needed to, to, to work in an environment that would give me flexible time mm. because I was working at Joy FM4. Time. I did one year of one term, one semester of mm -hmm. working full time and, and studying, studying full time. Oh, wow. I joined him and I said, wow. I don't know, I think I needed a bit more flexibility. So that's when he gave me, he invited me to come in and join him to set up this company that would um, start the known? kind of music awards. Wow, I said, that's so I left amazing. my job, joined him, we set up the company, and then our first event was the kind of music awards. So the daughter running around. You know, and just got things going. And one year, and you have so many other. You other. have you have Miss Malaika. What are some of the yeah. very so very popular we ones? Music you have? And, after, and as we were progressing, we um, other opportunities came mm -hmm. along, like the opportunity to host the Miss Malaika mm -hmm. Ghana um, franchise. Beauty, so we took beauty, the franchise a, and we began to okay. run that as well. But we, at, right from the onset, said we were not too keen on. Um, the image that beauty pageants had mm -hmm, at the time. You know, at the time, it was not about parading girls in underwear and and all of that. No, it wasn't just about the physical beauty, but mm. we were focused more about the inner, the inner beauty, the and intellect, and the eloquence and the personality of mm -hmm, the person. Mm -hmm. So we were not even looking at your shape or size, as long as you were not overweight, mm -hmm. you know, which is also not good for your health. So we we were very relaxed about those measures. And we focus more about the person, right. your personality. Right. So that's basically been our home for Miss Malaika. And we came, we bought it, we, we started doing it with a related style um, mm -hmm. content because that, that that was all the rave in the, at that time. At time. You know, so so we run it every year successfully. I think it's going into its 16th year. Wow. Yeah, and, and wow. it's brought out a lot of beautiful young girls yes. who yes. Have, are very well confident. Well educated, that's what and I love. Able to go out yes. there, most importantly, and impact I think, um, that community. This year or last year, I was part yeah. of um, the judging. Not the judging. I actually okay. spoke at one of. Okay, um, okay, the speaker series. Yes, yeah, we yes. do some clinics. Yes, some empowerment it was, clinics. It was yes, like I was going to say, it was empowering. Yes, it was yes. awesome. Yes. The ladies who even attended, mm -hmm. the kind of questions they, they were, were asking, asking and yeah. everything. So, like you said, it was almost like you know a whole room full of beauty mm -hmm. and brains. brains. Yes, and I was so yes. I was really really encouraged. The whole idea, so the whole idea is to to make um, the Miss Malaika a transformational experience. Mm. So every lady who's part of the pageant. So whether you win, win or, or not, not your, your life is transformed right. and you have a better outlook. And you're you still a winner more anyway. To, you know, to go through and you're empowered to move your life to the next level. Wow. And that's what it's all about. So right from the beginning, we did not even emphasize going abroad to compete in an international pageant. Mm. For us, that was not important. What was important was what you could do in Ghana. Yes. With your difference. status, mm. with your new um, capacity to influence, mm -hmm. what can you do mm -hmm. in Ghana. And so a lot what would of you say queens, some of the past um, queens have done? Oh, we have a lot of queens who have gone on to run their own charity projects. And and what is very unique about the Miss Malaika is the sense of camaraderie that we we create amongst the, the delegates. So they are mm -hmm. not even they don't even see themselves as competitors, competitors. and you know yeah. they actually work a lot together even after the pageant, all the other charity projects that the Queen does, she goes along with most of the, the, the delegates and they all That's fantastic. participate in That's it. Because it's really all about good. making an impact a in your positive community, impact. a positive impact right. in your community. So that's the ethos of the, of the pageant and um, discovering yourself also along the line. And I think we've been able to achieve that. We've um, put and out a lot of... of your, um, um, shows that excites me so much is mm. the thousand and one laughs thousand and one laughs yes, yes i think i've been yes. only once oh. uh, but sometimes i've been only one, one out of 26 uh, please <laughs> no, i'll come to the next one i promise <laughs> I you, mean, need to leave. You, need, but, you need to laugh more. <laughs> but it's, I think it's so excited. Mm -hmm. It's so, so funny. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, you know, how did that come up as well? Because comedy at the time wasn't really, did we have comedians we had, at the time? We, we had, had, apart from, you know, our comedy scene has been quite interesting. We had, um, in the past, we used to have comedians like, um, what's the name of that funny man? The, the fancy guy. Super Odie. No. Uh, 
his name is just gosh we had been only um, waterproof so ah Okay. What's a proof? Okay. You know? <laughs> okay, I mean, so those days, but even recordings on cassettes, there are people used to play it in the car, jokes, you know? I mean, it was a bit different from the, the concert party, you know? So he was actually one of the really, I mean, the pioneers of stand up comedy in Ghana. And then we had Tommy Anna Forsen also did a bit of that. Right. And then Fritz Baffo yes. did a bit of that. Yes. But what happened was that there was a big lull after Tommy Anna Forsen and Fritz Baffo. Mm. There was a big lull. There wasn't much happening in the comedy scene. But the Nigerian comedy scene was booming. And we did a couple of events here where we had Nigerian comedians as MCs, basically on the insistence of clients. So when we began to see what, how they were able to engage the audience in the pigeon and in jokes that we could relate to, we're like, hmm, this looks like this? something that would be really and exciting that's your home to as do, well now. you know, in Ghana. So it was a risk. So let's do the first one. So we spoke to a few partners, sponsors who were willing to take that gamble with us. And we, 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 we organized the first one. And people came, they had a good laugh, it was highly successful. And then they said one, one, one edition a year wasn't enough, so we decided another one in December. So we started doing twice a year. So it's twice a year now, but it's not twice just Nigerians, right? You still now, have, you have we, Kenyan... So what happened was we started, we started with the Nigerian comedians, and then as Ghanaians, as we began to watch them and all of that, then the new crop of Ghanaians also started Joined. joining the train. That and then amazing. we also did um, a talent show called Stars of the Future. Yes. The first edition, we had comedy as one of the um, categories. Mm -hmm. So through that comedy platform, we also were able to generate a new crop of comedians like Foster Romanos came through that platform. Oh, he did, yeah. okay. And others. So we, we were able to discover them and then put them onto the platform as well. So that platform now became a platform to also groom Ghanaian comedians. So anybody we we discovered who um, was funny, we just put them on the platform to start. So we've had we featured almost all of them. We had funny face, oh, and most fantastic. of them also actually, I mean, kind of burst into the limelight after they come on the comedy show mm. because you could be underground for a while, but once it puts you on that platform, you are able to shine. So what happens? Do you source for them or do they come? Some come. Okay. And some we, 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 people send to us. I mean, oh, we, we spot someone somewhere who did a good job with Because that's small one thing I was going to ask, like, how, do you, how do you source out your talent? How do we source? Well, mm. we, we look around and then people send them to us as well. People say, okay. oh, that made this guy somebody was very fun. People recommend them to us okay. and then people, and they walk up to us sometimes as well. But all we, all we just do is evaluate if we watch one or two of your appearances. It could be even to 20 people. You know, and even now with social media, you could just be yes, cutting a joke and filming yeah, yourself. Yeah. And if you are funny, and we think that so okay, you can use social media, you can engage Maybe can yourself. you give a, a bit of advice to ladies mm -hmm, out there mm -hmm, on social media, mm -hmm. um, the use of social media positively? <laughs> because like everybody now is like an influencer, uh -huh. but you can be influencing positively, positively or, or negatively. negatively. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like everybody as well. Well, I should say, when I want to general, you mm -hmm. know, I'm just generally saying everybody. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are in such a rush mm -hmm. to be in the limelight, yeah. to be a celebrity, yeah. to be a star to be an influencer, uh -huh. to be recognized, yeah. you know, and sometimes it can be in a wrong yeah. you know, direction. Now, you yeah. have a lot of experience, yeah. you know, and you've worked your way up uh -huh. to the top, uh -huh. and now you're being recognized, and this is only the beginning. Thank you. you. know, I know it's going to be, you know, so much more. Yeah. You know, do you have any advice to the young ladies out there, you know, on, on this, on the ones like, you know, Russian? I, 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 I find it's very interesting. I, I, there's, no, there's no rush. There's no rush in life. You have the whole of your life to live life. So really, there's no rush. I would advise people to just take it easy, take it time. Have a plan. Just have a plan and work towards it. And um, also know that whatever you put out there is influencing other people. Mm. So what do you want to use your power to influence to achieve? How do you want to use that power? Right. So that's um, what I think is a bit worrying. Who, who would you say is popular now that has a positive impact? So mm -hmm. that, that person could be a role model for somebody watching. I think um, there are a number of positive influences out there. One of them, I think, is Anita Eskin. Mm -hmm. And you also are well, thank uh, you. one of the positive thank influences. You. Who are you seeing your power to influence, to, mm. to, to encourage, to motivate, to inspire? Um, I, I have a very close social media space so i'm now <laughs> gathering the courage to open up because you i'm should. a very private person you know how can you be but private in the entertainment industry can you imagine no 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 no, no. Can you imagine? and you're asking me one out of 26. <laughs> i'm asking myself so that question you know so i need to find my way around and break out of that 
shyness, you know. But I think um, there are a lot of people out there doing positive things as well. Mm -hmm. So let's let those who are doing positive things with their life and who are are doing um, what do you, so my friend of mine says. Let's let's slay with content. Right. You know, True. So True. those of us in the space who want to influence positively, let's not shy away. So I'm a, right. I'm a culprit. <laughs> you need to open up. So you've repented. I've repented. On the today's show. And influence show. positively. Let people have access to you so you can also influence positively and mentor the next generation. That's very, very close to my heart. Right. Mentoring the next generation, you know. So do you have mentees? Um, I have, or is there a yeah, program that I have, you're going I have to, a program. to? I have mm -hmm. a program. I don't have like one or two mentees, mm -hmm. but I have um, a number of them through my school outreach okay. programs that I do as part of the National Women's Summit. We go around the secondary schools and then we have conversations with young ladies in the school. And I feel that that's, I feel that's where we should influence them right. because that's where they're in their formative stages. They're still making up their minds, a lot of peer pressure. And if they are clear about who they are and who they want to be at that age, if they go to university and they see other things happen around them, they will not be faced. They'll be focused on why they are there and the reason why they are there and how they need to just um, keep their eye on the ball, come out right. of university and let your career go in, right. be clear about what you want to achieve and keep going at it. And so I feel that's where we need to influence them in the secondary schools, and that's right, where so I'm doing to giving them a solid foundation. Solid foundation. Because yeah. I remember when I was in Natchmata School, a lot of speakers, they used to gather at an assembly hall, speaker A, speaker B, speaker C, <laughs> and I remember so well, they used to tell us, Natchmata School is a school of great leaders. Natchmata School, you have to be the head and the tail, you have to be living waters to testy land, you have to be this, you have to be that. They said so much to us that subconsciously, so even though you probably would think, oh, they're oh, talking too much, it's, it's still, it's still it's sinking stuck, in. It's stuck in my mind. Mm. And I think that that is where... And that's probably what also pushed you. That is where that's my how come strength you didn't of character give up. was built. Because I knew that I had to be something. I had to become something. Wow, is all I can you know? say. Wow, I am <laughs> so inspired. And uh, I think I'm going to write a book after today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Theresa. It's been an honor to have you on. Congratulations you. again. I think you're doing an amazing, amazing job. And a very, very, very quick note to parents mm -hmm. out there on how to nurture children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because a lot of parents are sort of stifling the creativity oh of their children. How, how dare don't, you say you want to be a comedian? How dare you say this? Don't get you know? me started So just, just a very short one, quickly. Maybe open their minds to yeah. something. I mean, I didn't. I grew up not even knowing about the entertainment industry. I found myself in it, and I've grown to love it because I believe that God has given us all talents, mm -hmm. and they, we have a lot of people who are gifted in creativity, in the creative arts through singing, through dancing, through fashion, through use of their hands mm -hmm. in designing, mm -hmm. and our environment has never really given creatives that support and chance, right from even the government level. We don't get acknowledged properly in the budgets. We don't get, get good mm. budget allocations. We don't have the infrastructure to ensure our growth. We do not have the policies to ensure our growth. So having worked in this industry for so many years, I mean, I've gotten to a point where I'm almost like here, and yeah. I'm like, you know what, this is it. We've got to do something about our creatives. We've got to respect them. We've got to acknowledge them. We've got to give them space to thrive. And we've got to enable them and empower them to thrive. And I think that the country will be the better for it because the industry um, employs a lot of young people. Yes. A lot of young people. And um, the industry has a capacity to absorb a lot of unemployment. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, so we can mm -hmm. create a lot of jobs. I mean, you believe that one, 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 one night of Ghana Music Awards employs over 800 people. Wow. Yes. Wow. I handle They're actually the paid. Paid. 800 people work on Ghana Music Awards. That's on just that one night. Right. And this I can tell through the crew tags that we give yes. out. These are crew people yes. coming there yes. to work, yes. work, yes. work, yes. work. Every artist we bring, we, we put on a stage is coming with about 10, 15 people. Wow. So you can imagine if we have how many artists, then we have the MCs, then we have the yeah, photographers, sound, technical, yeah. live screens. I mean, you name it. It's huge. Then it's the huge. companies who are activating in the lobby and all of that. I mean, this is about 800 the people. Ashes. The ashes and everybody yeah. working around on that yeah. night is getting paid. It's a huge it's industry. A huge, this is just one yes, event. Yes, yes. And this is even without the, if I, if I add the cycle of all the other things we do before the, the night, 
and everybody who works with us throughout. So it's a thousand. about over a thousand people yeah. just because of it's one huge. event. So you can't imagine if we have more of such things happening. We are going to be discussing something <laughs> and we're going to make a positive change. This is just the beginning. So Theresa, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know how busy you are thank you. to spend a few moments with us. You've given thank us you. many words of wisdom. Ladies out there, I'm sure you've heard and you're going to actually implement it from now because you are the change. You are today's woman. Now to say a thank you, this is just something little. Now what I'm doing is to really encourage and you said it, the foundation mm -hmm. is so, so, so important. Yes. If you believe in yourself, you know That's who you starts. are, what you stand for mm -hmm. and everything, you don't get influenced mm -hmm. negatively, mm -hmm. you know, and self-love is so, so, so important. Uh. <laughs> so this is a little gift from, from me and my crew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to you thank to say you. thank you so much. Thank and you. there's one thing I want you to do. I want you to tell us one thing you love about yourself. Wow. This is beautiful. That's a really cute love pillow. One thing I love on myself is that um, I'm unfazed. I'm unfazed by things that go on around me. You hardly find me panicking about any situation because I, I have confidence in myself and my confidence is deep on my confidence in God. And I believe that he has a purpose, he has a plan for me. And as long as I stay on his side, I will not miss my path. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so, so much. We wish you all the very best. Thank and you I know so there's much. many more exciting things you're coming A up with. A whole lot more. We'll be Just there. stay tuned. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you so much for watching this week. I'm so, so, so fired up and I'm sure you're inspired as well. Many thanks to our sponsors, the Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel for my beautiful set, the one-to-one -one bar. Many thanks to GTP as well. And don't miss the show next week, Saturday. It's going to be extra special. 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And you can follow me on Instagram at ReneQGH. Have a blessed weekend, everybody. Thank you.